In ethnobotany class, we study the plants that people use. Not so much this showy introduced form of Ixora, but rather plants such as this, Piper Ponapensa. This plant grew here by itself and has local uses here on Pompeii. Here on Pompeii, it's known as Kunuk. In ethnobotany, we study the plants that people use. The course really has two faces to it. One is how people use the plants, the names of the plants and what they're used for. The other face of the course is the botanic side of the course. A plant like this doesn't produce flowers. This plant is known as a selaginella. It's different from plants that do produce flowers or that produce cones. These are some of the things we'll learn on the botanic side of the course. The two faces of the course are an ethnographic side that looks at how people use a particular plant and a botanic side to the course covering the different types of plants there are, from some of the simplest plants, such as this moss, to the more complex plants that have flowers on them. When we look at the plants that people use, we'll see that there are, are a number of plants that are important for a number of uses. A plant such as this, Osimum tenui florum, can both be used to season food and it has healing uses. We'll be looking at four different ways plants are used by people. Plants can be used for healing. Plants can be used as food. Plants can be used in what we'll call material culture, to build homes, canoes, baskets, to construct things, or to build tools. And then the fourth way plants are used are in ceremonial uses, sacred uses, special uses. In that section will also include the legends and stories about plants. Some of our plants that may be useful to us may be ones that you simply overlook. This euphorbia herta down here is used to help people breathe when they have asthmatic conditions or coughs and colds associated with uh, lung congestions. That's our euphorbia herta. To you it probably looks like a weed, but it's an important healing plant. As we study plants, people, and culture, we will learn that the land and the people are intricately, intricately linked. Here on Pompeii, people refer to the culture as the Chiakin Sap, the culture of the land. The land gives us life. It gives us food. It gives us oxygen. The air we breathe. These come from the land. Some things like mango. That's a young mango. Bring us food. The land keeps us alive, but only if we keep the land alive. This is part of the cycle. We cannot live without the land, and the land, uh, to some extent, depends on us taking care of it. It's a two-way operation. If we take care of the land, the land will take care of us. If we don't take care of the land, the land won't take care of us. Kananga odorada. A plant used decoratively here for the blossoms at night that produce a pleasant smell. Do you know its name in your language? We'll be learning local names and local uses for the plants. Or more accurately, you will be. For some plants you may have a name, for others you might not. A lot will depend on whether or not that plant even grows on your island. Plants like the Selaginella that we saw earlier doesn't grow everywhere. But this one does. This small plant has healing uses and grows on almost all of the islands. 
usually, as we see here, in some kind of rocky sort of place. But whether it has a name, now well, that'll be another matter. Some islands it will have a name and some it might not have any name. It'll often depend on whether or not they use that particular plant. One of the goals of the course is for you to see the plants around you as friends. Your plants are your friends. If you're in the forest or on the beach and look around you, the plants you see, they are your friends. You might not yet know their names, but as I said, that's one of the goals of the courses, and there'll be material to help you learn the Latin names. You see, that's the difficult part of this. If you have a plant, such as this, which you may or may not know the name for, but you know the use, how do you tell somebody somewhere else what plant you're looking at? For that, we use Latin names. Pelea microphylla is the Latin name for this plant. That's the name used around the world by botanists. All plants have a name given to it by botanists. And that allows us to communicate with other people working with plants. So the Asymum tenui florum, that's its Latin name. If you're somewhere else and you don't know the local name, you can usually use the Latin name to access a local dictionary to figure out what the name is. Cadering here on Pompeii, Aring in Koshai, Warung in Chuk, and if my memory doesn't fail me, Lamar over in Yap. So those local names are good if you're in that place, but when you're away from those places, the Osimum Tenui Florum name will be more useful. So you'll be learning some Latin names as well. During the course, you'll be doing a couple different what I call deliverables during the course, beyond some assignments, one of the things you'll be doing is taking pictures of different types of plants, and I'll specify that more as we go along. You'll have a list of types of plants that you need to collect a picture of, if it's available on your island, and submit those to iNaturalist. We'll be using iNaturalist to submit observations. And I'll cover that in a moment. Um, uh, they'll be submitted online, and they'll go into a global biodiversity database that documents the biodiversity around us. We're going to submit the plant along with the local name and the local use for that particular plant. That list will be provided in the course. Another deliverable will be presentations. You might recall that I mentioned that we have plants that are used for healing, plants that are food, plants in material culture, and plants that are parts of legends, stories, sacred uses, and ceremonial uses. For that sec section of the course, you'll be asked to produce a short video uh, for a healing plant, later a food plant, even later in the course a material culture plant and even later a plant that has some story about it or legend or some ceremonial use. They'll just be short videos that either show how the plant is used or how the food is prepared. Uh, and I'll be covering those. There'll be four of those videos spread out across the 16-week term. I know that videos are difficult to upload in some places out here, but if we keep them short, I think you'll be successful during the 16-week course of the term and getting the four uploaded at some point. That's a bit of an overview of the course and some of the things we'll be covering in the course. In a separate video, I'll be looking at the technologies that you'll need to tackle the material in this course, the iNaturalist app and uh, the... the um, use of Schoology and some of the other things that we use to coordinate the course. The one thing you will need is the one thing I'm holding in my own hand. To tackle this course, you will need a smartphone. You do not necessarily need a laptop, but you will need a smartphone in order to be able to capture images of plants, record your videos, and the course will be designed to access Schoology 
and assignments through that same modality. So you will want a smartphone with some capability, a good screen, and fairly good memory capabilities, fairly modern smartphone to do the assignments in this course. That is a of course requirement. So welcome to the ethnobotany course where we will learn about the plants around you where you live.